Hi there, and welcome to yet another WCT one-on-one -on -one interview. We're so fortunate to be surrounded by wonderful colleagues at WICHE, which is our parent organization. WICHE is the Western Interstate Commission of Higher Education. And just down the hall when I'm in the office from me is the Behavioral Health Unit. And today, we have Liza Tupa, who is a director with the Behavioral Health Unit. And she's gonna share with us some good practices around self-care and how to manage during this incredibly challenging and unprecedented time. Liza, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Please thank go you. ahead and do a, an introduction. Yeah, thank you, Megan. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Um, so I am, as you said, with the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education's Behavioral Health Program. We, in a nutshell, do behavioral health consulting all over the United States, and we also uh, frequently partner with our member institutions, higher ed institutions, um, on various kind of student wellness uh, initiatives and other initiatives from a behavioral health perspective, that's mental health and substance abuse, um, to encourage completion and, and degree attainment um, on campus and encourage overall student well-being. Great, and thank you. And I'll introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. I'm Megan Raymond, and I'm the Director of Programs and Sponsorship here at WCET. So this has just been an unbelievable time for those that are around me and the students that we serve in our institutions, as well as me personally, you know, trying to manage a kid at home, trying to do homeschool and uh, everything that comes with that. So as I look around, I see that people are very, very tired and they're, they're scrambling. They're trying to do the best they can. What are some tips that you have for how we can manage during this time when we don't know necessarily how long this is going to continue and knowing that we have to keep doing what we can do? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think, I mean, number one, remember that a lot of us are in the same boat um, and you're not alone. Um, this is a super stressful time and there's so many unknowns and question marks that makes for a lot of stress. I think an important thing to remember is that no one needs to be a superhero or be perfect. Um, especially if you're not work, if you're not used to working remotely or under this kind of uncertainty, cut yourself some slack. Um, there are pros and cons to working remotely, uh, especially full time and, and, um, you want to work personally to maximize the pros and minimize the cons. And those are going to vary from person to person. Um, I think you might find, some people might find that their typical work routine, even if they were remote workers, isn't fitting their needs right now or feels constraining or unproductive in some way. So you may want to look at organ, uh, reorganizing your day. Um, time blocking can be a really effective way of getting things done and not letting time slip away. Um, you can Google time blocking and, finding, and find all kinds of resources for that. Um, taking breaks is also really important too. Um, I'm working from home every day and I have to force myself to make sure I get up. Um, and um, just, you know, don't, don't get bed sores from sitting on my chair all day, my <laughs> chair. Um, there's, a, there's a cute method called the Pomodoro method uh, of time management and it's named after just that simple little um, uh, tomato shaped kitchen timer uh -huh. um, which in Italian is Pomodoro. Um, that involves setting a timer for 30 to 45 minutes, maybe 50, whatever you think your brain can handle initially. Set that timer, work productively and really focus during that time and when it goes off take a five or a ten minute break, get up, stretch, uh, maybe run and do a, a quick household task, check in with your kids if you need to. Um, you can set the timer for them too. You can use, you can use your phone timer um, and then get back, reset your, your timer and focus again. You might find that spending, you know, when we're in the office or working more traditionally, we have some natural breaks that we don't always get at home. And so this kind of forces you to structure. It also really assists you to focus while that timer is going for your work time. Um, physical exercise is really important. I encourage people to plan ahead for exercise and also plan ahead for their diet. Um, you can pre-portion out snacks or decide what, what snacks you're gonna have so you're not running to that kitchen that's so mm -hmm. close, feeling bad. Um, getting outside, uh, even with social distancing is very important. Uh, and lastly, I would say, when you're really starting to stress, sort through the things that are in your control and the things that aren't in your control. 
and focus on those things that are in your control. Um, you know, it's almost like putting blinders on, focusing really only on the things that you, you can change right now. Um, and lastly, I would say, you know, if you have kids at home and you're trying to manage them, I've got two teenagers. Uh, they're to, uh, technically on spring break right now doing nothing. Um, <laughs> give yourself a break and give them a break. Lower those expectations a little bit. I appreciate you saying that. I've been trying to block out a little bit of time each day to make sure that my seven-year-old is having somewhat of a spring break. And I plan to take tomorrow off, but with social distancing, it's hard to even say what that's going to look like. So we're just going to play it by ear, but I appreciate you saying that. And I also reflect on a lot of the points you've made about trying to find balance while working at home because I, prior to this, which I call BC, back in the <laughs> days BC before COVID, I worked at home three days a week and I had, I'm really, really efficient at working at home and things are very different now. And so I've been kind of struggling with why, why is it so, so different? And it, I think it's just the competing demands. So I, I like your strategy and I'll certainly incorporate some of those. Thank you for that advice. Um, I'm starting to sense in the people that we interact with in our community that there's underlying anxiety that may not be recognized by those individuals as, as anxiety. Um, how do we help people sort of recognize that they're in this pattern and that maybe it's time to step back and do some self care and that acknowledging that anxiety is, is common and that it's something to be managed, but needs to happen sooner than later. Yeah. You know, and often um, um, professionals and parents can, can notice it in others before they acknowledge it in themselves. So I think that's a great question. I think that the things to look out for are um, excessive worry, um, a change in your sleeping or eating habits, um, irritability, mm -hmm. short temperedness, um, even, um, well, I mentioned worry, even maybe some, you know, getting more tearful more often. I think those are all signals, maybe arguing with your loved ones a little bit more. Those are all signals that you might be having anxiety. Um, one, one suggestion I have is go to www.virusanxiety.com. It's literally does us a website design to help you manage your, um, manage your anxiety um, about, about what's going on right now. Um, again, taking breaks. I know it sounds cliche, but physical exercise is hugely helpful for anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you've got cable TV, you've got free access to little exercise videos and yoga videos. If you've got Comcast um, or uh, other, other big um, cable uh, products, they often have free exercise videos that you can just follow along with, take a vigorous walk, uh, limit your news consumption, you know, maybe check in in the morning and check in at night. Mm -hmm. it. There's not going to be that many changes that occur in the meantime. And we can get really swept into waiting for, you know, that next little piece of information that in the long run, it doesn't matter if we find it out in one hour or four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think those are the signs that you kind of want to watch for. And, and, you know, let your loved ones tell you too. You, you probably tell them if, if you're worried about them, listen to them too. If they're, if they're saying, getting a little edgy there, or are you okay? Um, and, and let that be a guide. Great. Well, that's super helpful as well. And many of our leaders within WCET are for the first time managing remote teams and trying to keep their teams productive and, and support them at the same time, what kind of guidance do you have for us navigating this new, new and hopefully temporary circumstances, right. but who knows? Right. You know, there are definite challenges to leading and managing remotely. Um, and your staff are going to react differently. Your team leader, your team members, excuse me, are going to react differently. I suggest staying in communication in regular communication. Um, you may want to have um, more frequent meetings, but less, they don't have to be as long. They can be mm -hmm. shorter. Um, I know that my team, we used to have meetings, staff meetings, maybe every six weeks uh, at most. And now we're meeting every other week just for an hour. Um, and sometimes we get done before them, but it really, it does prompt that sense of community, seeing people, mm -hmm. um, when you do inter interact, um, 
I, I do recommend video chatting a lot. Um, it, it's a, it's more personal, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's a better form of communication when you can read your your team's nonverbals, right, and facial expressions. See if they're laughing at your jokes still. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and it also, you know, it promotes a little bit more accountability too. Right. Um, so more frequent check-ins. They don't have to be as long. So communicate team-wide, but also make an effort to communicate with your staff individually. That is going to give them the opportunity to maybe express some personal stressors they might have, mm -hmm. uh, individual needs. I think this is an important time to be uh, flexible. Like you said, some a lot of staff right now, they don't have daycare. I mean, they, they are stuck working from home and having to take care of their children, which is new for a lot of them. So, um, you know, find ways that you can help each individual staff person in their response and their productivity right now. Pro, you know, share stress management tips with them. Um, one of those is to encourage that they, you know, have a routine, um, make, you know, encourage them to have some structure in place, make that commute to work, even if it's only, you know, across the room to their home office. Um, and, and maybe as a team, help prioritize tasks. Uh, if, if you think that team members are struggling with productivity at all, um, that's a good one to do kind of group-wise or one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and, and again, encouraging that self-care. I think one of the nicest, most helpful things that my boss did for me was, um, you know, we all started working remotely. And I'm like you, I'm used to working remotely a few days a week. Uh, he said, you know, don't forget to get up and take breaks and mm -hmm. go for a walk whenever you can take a walk. Um, that's, that's a really supportive message. Um, when you are worried, maybe that, um, your productivity won't be up to speed or you won't get this or that done. When you give your staff permission to do those things, they're more likely to do them. And be more productive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's a good reminder too. Even though you're working at home, sometimes I find it's harder to in the day because if I'm working at the office in Boulder, I'm going to be done by 4.30, so I, I'm not in traffic and I can get home at a reasonable time and get to daycare. Whereas at home, I can work much, much past that, especially without having to go to daycare right now. So uh, it is a good reminder. You kind of expand to fill your task and mm -hmm. expand to fill the available time. Um, that's why that time management, I think, is really important. Absolutely. And I like what you said about connecting with your team. The other day, we just had a virtual Zoom meeting and it was optional. You could join if you wanted or not, but we just all wanted a chance to sort of have that water cooler opportunity to catch up and see how people are. And, yeah. and honestly, I thought, okay, well, this is just one more Zoom meeting on my calendar, but it was really good to just connect with people. And we're pretty distributed, so it was nice to get our arms around everything that people are working on too. So at the end of the day, Liza, we're all here for the students, you know, we have many, many other things that distance us from students because neither of us are on a campus and we work with campuses, but right. what are some resources that you can point our members to, to support our students during this time? Yeah, I do think it's really important to remember that um, we might be all pretty far along in our careers. We're through with most of our schooling. This is an extremely st stressful time for students mm -hmm. who may uh, may have some of their um, schooling disrupted and extended potentially. Um, and they, they're not prepared for that financially or other aspects of their life. Um, I think helping them manage their expectations is really important. Making sure that someone is available to take their call or answer their email in a timely way to, to be able to give them that individual support with mm -hmm. you know whatever personal questions they might have. Um, Share with them the tips we talked about today in terms of being productive and staying, you know, well uh, while, while you're on a screen all day. Um, I think, you know, when you look at your own institution, ask yourself and look around for the, the current student leaders who have been the traditional student leaders and what are they doing and how can you leverage them to support your now more, maybe more distance learners. Um, also students, whether or not they've been distance learners or whether now they're having to become distance learners, may be experiencing food, housing, insecurity, right. um, storage needs. Mm -hmm. uh, the APA, American Psychological Association, has a really nice list of 
uh, but and it's kind of mapped out by state uh, resources for things like food and housing. Um, I can send you that, and if you want to distribute it to your folks, you can. Uh, U-Haul, for example, the company is offering 30 days of free storage for students that might have to move. Uh, Comcast and Spectrum are both offering 60 days of uh, free Wi-Fi for students who may have had to move and now they may not have uh, Wi-Fi or they're now going distance and they're not used to this. There's a lot of resources out there. Um, your universities probably have some pretty good lists, but um, people can reach out to me, certainly. I'll send you what I have. Great. Uh, so that uh, I think most importantly, remembering how stressful this is for them, um, helping managing their expectations, and just be able to pick up the phone or answer an email when they have questions. That's great advice. Well, Liza, I really appreciate your time. Do you have any further advice or recommendations for us? Um, I think, again, I, probably just underscoring um, not to put too much pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to the students, to look for ways to advocate for them right now. Um, I think a lot of them are feeling very powerless. <clears throat> you know, students who may have uh, research as a training, as a required component of their, of their degree, they're being locked out of labs. They don't know if they're going to be able to complete on time. Mm -hmm. um, things like that are happening. Um, and even with traditional distance learners, isn't that funny that I can use that term now, that there's such a thing as a traditional right. distance learner? Um, they may have unforeseen impacts um, because of all these shifts. And if you can find ways to advocate for your students, I think that's the best way to support them. You know. Great. Well, we really appreciate you and the good work that's happening at Wichita's Behavioral Health Unit. So thank you and be well. Thank you.